To me, this looks like the Pinterest pantry of Natalie's dreams, but on a major budget. Does anyone else do that? <laughs> strategically place stuff on their fridge or their cabinet shelves to make better decisions. <laughs> I'm at the point where my brain is just so done looking at all of this stuff. Should it be in a mason jar? Should it be in a plastic thing? Should it be in a bin? Seriously, wait until you see this after. I have never been more proud of myself in a decluttering project before. This is seriously amazing. A palace. Hey everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome to my channel for another episode of Messy to Minimal. This is the extreme decluttering series that I've done on this channel since the new year, where I've gone through every room of this house and we've been able to get rid of 80% of our family stuff. Today, we are diving back into my pantry to do an extreme declutter and reorganization. This time around, we're focusing not only on functionality, but I'm ready to take the dive into organizing it in a way that is also visually pleasing. But don't worry, I'm not rushing off to the container store to drop a few hundred dollars on new bins and containers. I do things a little bit differently around here. I'm actually reusing and repurposing some things I already have, and I'm shopping thrift stores, garage sales, and clearance racks to keep it as budget friendly as possible. And to be an example that you don't need all new stuff or everything you see on Pinterest to have a functional and dare I say beautiful pantry. If you have been watching pantry organization videos and I'm just one of the several and you're new here to this channel, I hope that you will subscribe if you enjoy what you see. And for those of you who have seen the other episodes, leave this emoji in the comments so that I can say hi. I always love chatting with you guys about where we're at on our own minimalism or simple living journeys. But let's get started in the pantry, which as you can see is also my laundry room, multi-purpose space. Raise your hand if you have multi-purpose spaces in your house and you kind of have to get a little creative. We're gonna get a little creative today. Let's get started. My husband Weston and I were both raised uh, learning that when you set your grocery budget, part of it goes toward stocking up a bit, either on dry goods, flour, rice, oats, that sort of thing, or canned goods, so that you have a bit of an extra supply if something should happen, like being uh, postpartum, like when I had my babies, I didn't wanna go out grocery shopping as much, and it was really nice to have extra food on hand, or when I've gone through times with my chronic illness. And when the global pandemic hit and everyone was panic buying and wiping the shelves clean in our local grocery stores, we had a good stock of food no one in our house went hungry we were able to share it with friends and neighbors if they weren't able to find what they needed in the grocery stores and we were also able to donate some of the extras that we had to a food bank to help those who needed it more this is not to pat myself on the back or to say look at me and how great i am it's to give you a real life sort of example of what having extra food in your pantry can do that is not to say that there isn't anything in this pantry right now that needs to go. There are a few things, especially like empty boxes and stuff that needs to go. I just thought I'd give that little explanation. I do have a lot of international viewers. People from all parts of the world have different methods for how they stock their pantry. Some people live on a week to week basis, not judging that at all. And I hope that you don't judge me because this is not um, excessive. This is not wasteful because we're not throwing things away anymore like we were before I did that other extreme declutter in that other messy to minimal episode. But right now it's time to go through everything. I am actually for the first time ever, I don't think I've ever done this except for when we've moved. I'm going to take every single item off these shelves. This is not the method that I used the last time I decluttered in here. And I kind of wish that I did. It needs some help in here. So thank you for bearing with me for the longer intro. I hope you enjoy kind of hearing my mindset and my goals and my plan moving forward. And moving forward, we're gonna just take everything off these shelves so that we can have a well-organized, functional, tranquil space in our pantry. Take it from me, save yourself the money. This thing is a piece of crap. This is 
how I feel about the current state of my pantry. I'm seriously tempted to take this door off its hinges so I can just go in and out because ugh, this is driving me crazy. I think I'm gonna do it. So if you guys are enjoying this video so far, you can do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel out a lot and it helps me know what sort of videos to make more of in the future. So now I'm going to just pop up here and grab all of this stuff down from here. I actually think I have some like Christmas mugs in this tote too. It needs to come down. Wearing a black shirt was probably a bad idea. Let me show you this little pile of stuff that I am getting rid of. This is it. This is all that I found in the pantry that needs to go. Um, a couple of cookbooks. I never use cookbooks. Thank you, Pinterest and YouTube videos. Um, and then this one uh, grocery bag that's not even like all the way full of just empty stuff. Uh, we used all of this. There's just two pieces of this bread left over. Just like bags of chips that were like completely used. So we have really cut down on our waste since doing that last declutter, which I'm so happy about. And now it's time to start putting some of this stuff back. These are um, the anchor hawking. This is the one gallon and these ones are the two gallon. I've had these, I thrifted them actually the first year Weston and I were married. So these are over eight years old. We have come to the realization that these anchor hawking jars are the best part of our pantry. They are the things that work the best. They are so functional. We can see exactly the inventory. We can go buy in bulk and not have to deal with big packages of stuff and have waste because of it. So when we came to that realization, we just said, you know what? Let's convert as much as we can into clear packaging preferably glass. So I started back at square one with my beloved mason jars. I have a little collection that, you know, whenever I'm at a thrift store or even like the clearance section at Michael's sometimes, especially before the pandemic, you could find mason jars super cheap. They're a little bit harder to come across nowadays, but I lucked out. I wanna show you guys this. So I have been looking for the half gallon size mason jars because I had a couple, but I think that this is gonna be the best size for what I need. I was watching At Home with Nikki and she was talking about how she organizes into half gallon mason jars. And after seeing that video, it was like, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. So I went on the hunt and they're so expensive right now with everyone being at home and trying their hand at canning. It's really hard to find these mason jars. Um, but I went by a garage sale just a couple of streets down from me and I saw these on the side of the road. $5 for this package, $3 for this. So for eight bucks, I got myself 10 half gallon size mason jars. I have learned that even the hidden spaces in my house, it's, I value them looking good. But I am not the person to go to the container store, Bed Bath & Beyond, and just buy $300 worth of clear containers. It's just not my style. I don't think it's necessary. If that's what you enjoy doing, you do you. I'm gonna do me, and doing me today is using mason jars and other glass jars that I have to uh, organize this in. I am going to first get these mason jars and a couple of other stuff that I found at the thrift store for storage into my dishwasher on a sanitation cycle. Um, and then I'm going to put some canned goods back in the pantry and sort of map out the different categories of where stuff is gonna go.
are back. I just picked up the kids from school. I took a little break from my organizing. Liam, what was the first thing you said when we walked in through the door? This is a disaster! <laughs> he was like, what happened to the kitchen? This is a disaster! It's actually looking a lot better than it was about an hour ago. That was the it gets worse before it gets better stage. And now I'm making good progress, decanting items. I'll show you what I've done so far. So I have a bunch of mason jars, two sizes so far. The 32 ounce size, which is good for like the smaller collections of nuts and seeds and stuff like that. And then I have these half gallons. I will give you a full pantry tour and show you everything that I have later. But I just kind of want to give you a quick look at what's going on so far. And I have my anchor hawking. Um, I think I'm going to get another one of the two gallon ones. But I have two of those and then four of the one gallon ones. I'm adding to my growing pile of garlic garbage, which this is the stuff that I decluttered out that I showed you before, and now I'm adding to the stuff that needs to be recycled, packaging, stuff like that, as I'm converting over to these mason jars. I suggest getting up and finding a little drawer or a spot or a fridge or something to declutter while you're watching. So get up and declutter. where my brain is just so done looking at all of this stuff. I'm having trouble just wading through the different categories and what makes sense to like group together. Should it be in a mason jar? Should it be in a plastic thing? Should it be in a bin? And the interruptions from the kids is <laughs> making it even harder. So I think I'm at the point where I need to start putting stuff on the shelves in order to take it out of this space to see what I have. <laughs> of the pantry declutter and reorganization. So I picked up one of these little tiered steps here um, to stack stuff on. I ordered one from Target because I wanted to just put it next to whatever I could DIY to kind of show you guys a comparison with the intention of just returning it when I'm done or possibly finding a spot for it. When the boys converted from their two twin beds to a bunk bed, we gave Haley one of the twin beds and then the other one that was more beat up, um, we offered it to family and friends first. No one really wanted it. Thrift stores were closed at the time, so I disassembled it because um, it couldn't be gotten rid of. And I'm so glad I did because now I have been able to use wood pieces from it to do different projects. I built shelves for Haley's room out of them um, and then other pieces of wood here. I'm thinking about making my own tiers just to kind of bump up the back um, mason jars that I have here. This was a leg <laughs> to one of the beds. So I'm gonna find the smoothest side of it. I think that looks best, even though you're not really gonna see it because it'll be covered up by the stuff in front of it. So there's that. Let's see if the mason jars fit on top. This is gonna work. So I'm gonna put the sweetest stuff to the back so I'm not tempted to open the jar and stick my hand in and get some caramels or <laughs> chocolate chips. Does anyone else do that? <laughs> Strategically place stuff on their fridge or their cabinet shelves? 
to make better decisions. <laughs> these two aren't as tall as that one. These were just the end pieces that I cut off when I was making the shelves in Haley's room. And so they'll create another level. There, that works. Okay. And then we don't need anything for this bottom tier. Pecans, crushed pecans, and pistachios. I stacked things on this little one and it wasn't deep enough on each step for this size of mason jar and certainly not deep enough for the big mason jars. So verdict reached. Uh, doing it for free is better than paying, I think this was like $16 for this. So I'm going to put this back with the other three that they accidentally gave me and uh, return them. So there are other spots in my house that are affected by a disorganized pantry. Um, and now that I have space in there because I've rearranged stuff, um, I think that I'm going to start transferring some things into the pantry that I haven't had in there before. So I'm hoping that we can keep just our very basic spices in the cabinet right here at the stove and the extra ones the blends and stuff that he really likes and a few of the things that i use on a more rare occasion like baking spices and stuff like that can find a home in the newly organized pantry weston's here hi hi you want to help me declutter the spice cabinet i'd love to okay <laughs> Um, she had one of these bins that just wasn't being used anymore. This is like the perfect size to put some small appliances in. And so I have the immersion blender, a hand mixer, and a food processor that I only use about once a month. That's still regularly enough to keep them. However, I don't need to keep them under here because this is like an everyday sort of access cabinet. So I'm gonna pop them into the bin that I snagged from Haley's room. Weston just got back from Costco and Haley's helping us restock the sweet potatoes. I actually took the sweet potatoes out of this drawer. I know you're not supposed to store onions and potatoes together, but we go through them faster than they can go bad. So they're fine for now. And this top drawer actually is where we're gonna store some fruit because I hate having it out in my kitchen for whatever reason. So we found a solution there. Good job. Okay, push it in. Perfect. Seven days later, yes, 
seven days since I started this project and I have been working every single day on this. I filmed some of it. For part of it, I just put the camera away. I was just in my pajamas in the middle of the night in here reorganizing and labeling, but I am finally ready to show you the tour of my pantry now that it's all organized and extreme decluttered. This took so much work and slow work. It was a lot of consideration and planning and revamping and relabeling and then ripping those label offs and trying something else, but I think we've landed in a really good spot. I also wanted to give myself a little bit of time to kind of live in the space and use Use it and use the system of organization so that I could show you what is actually working for us. So it's been a week and I am so, so happy. Let's take a look at the pantry. This is a night and day difference. I can't even believe that this is my pantry. I love it so much and it was so affordable to do. To me, this looks like the Pinterest pantry of Natalie's dreams but on a major budget. So let's start at the bottom. Um, this is our canned goods and this system is working so much better than that stupid uh, can dispenser thing that we had before. Seriously, that thing was awful. I can actually see the inventory that I have and I arranged it like, like items together. So a bunch of our beans are together. We have more Asian flavors like coconut milk and korma curry sauce and water chestnuts. We kind of have a little tomato section going on here, a soups and broth section. Like I showed you, we have our potatoes and onions and then I turned this drawer into our hard fruits drawer. So citrus fruits and apples will go in there. And then let's go to the dry goods shelf. And this is so visually satisfying to me. I love it so much. Okay, starting over on this side with our Anchor Hawking Heritage Hill jars, the oats and the white rice. These are the two jars that we've had forever, the system that we've used for probably as long as we've been married. And it's working so well. So we're continuing with that. I just put new labels on them and kind of cleaned up the lids a little bit. Then we have pancake mix um, that we mixed up. So I will leave a recipe for you guys, uh, just a Pinterest link that I found years ago that I just mix up and put into this jar. Then we have our Kodiak cakes protein pancake mix, which as you can see, we need to buy more of. All purpose flour, whole wheat flour behind that, brown rice. And one of the things that I found at the thrift store was actually this little um, scoop, this little dry goods scoop. And I thought, you know what? That would actually be nice to have in each one of these things because for most of these items, I just kind of eyeball the quantity and I don't need an exact measurement. These are little five ounce scoops and I bought more off of Amazon. Weston and I both since implementing this, um, you know, we're always in these dry goods and it has made such a difference for when it comes time to like bring the pressure cooker over and grab some rice or grab some oats to make oatmeal in the morning and just have that scoop already there and not have to grab another thing from the kitchen. Highly recommend getting individual scoops for your dry goods containers. This was a game changer. Okay, moving on to the dry goods in the mason jars. I'll just let you guys take a look at this. I'm not gonna call out each individual item because if you're watching other pantry <laughs> organization videos, you might be kind of sick of that by now. Um, but something I did want to point out is how I labeled the couscous. Do you guys ever watch Richard Scary? Couscous, the great detective. I just had to put that there. I had originally written the names of what was in these jars on the lids, but I thought it was better to have it like printed out so that Weston could read my handwriting. And I love my Dymo label maker. I've had it for years. In case you're wondering, I did actually add a couple of these bars, um, extra bars to these wire shelving to just bolster them up and to add more support. I added an extra one here and an extra one here as well as this extra one just to make sure that nothing's going to come tumbling down there's a lot of weight on here now that we have more glass in addition to the weight of the food and so i wanted to make sure we were being as safe as possible and you'll notice that i kept the heaviest stuff toward the bottom so that if something should fall or a kid touches it it doesn't have too far to fall and it won't hurt someone or get damaged. Moving up, we have our pasta section. So this is like individual bags of pasta. We have some bonza pasta. I have this specialty 
fall pumpkin shaped pasta that I got at Trader Joe's. I actually have uh, recorded two day in the life or like get it all done with me videos since starting this video and I do a little Trader Joe's haul in one of those. So stay tuned for that video. I also have more decluttering inspiration in that video for you guys. Boxed pasta, we're just keeping there stacked on the shelf. This will be like grab and go kid snacks. My kids are obsessed with chewy bars and our favorite are the market pantry ones from Target. They don't drop uh, chocolate chips everywhere. I will highly recommend those. Um, and then like I showed you, I did keep a couple of these plastic dispenser containers. We have cereal in this one. I also have uh, fishy crackers in this one. And I was running out of white bins and I was really determined not to buy much. And these white bins are kind of hard to find right now. They're discontinuing them at Target. So if you do find them, some of them are on clearance and are very affordable. However, I knew I had some things around my house that I could repurpose and use for this space. So I bought these ones at Michael's months ago. I actually had one of these on our TV stand uh, cabinet that held controllers, Xbox controllers, um, headphones and stuff like that. But I did a big declutter of my TV stand and was able to consolidate everything into one little thing that goes inside the cabinet. So that freed up this basket for a bread basket. And then I had um, two of these. Um, there's the same sort of basket on our school cabinet but I was able to take what was in both of them and consolidate it to one, which freed up another basket. So I like adding a little bit of that natural basket look in here, and I didn't have to spend any additional money because I had them on hand. If you're looking to fix up the way your pantry looks, again, you don't have to go to the container store to buy all new stuff. You might have boxes and bins and stuff laying around that you could repurpose or just like switch out. I knew I wanted all white in here to just kind of make everything uniform and neutral and crisp. I had a lot of the black and the gray before and so I was able to switch out ones from the white that I had in other places of my house. This one was under my bathroom sink so I switched that out with a gray one um, and then I had a couple of these in the garage holding some stuff out there that it wasn't necessary to have something as um, uniform out there. So I was able to switch stuff out. You guys saw that I had a couple of these in Haley's room. I did end up buying two more to round out the collection, but that's a lot less money to pay than if I was to buy everything brand new and double up on the stuff that I already had. Next to the Fishy Crackers dispenser, we have our bin of snacks, and I'll just throw the extra bags of stuff that didn't fit into whatever container I was decanting into, and just kind of laying on top here. Um, but we have stuff like, you know, go-go squeeze, or microwave popcorn, chips, crackers, that sort of thing in here. That's been working really well. And then, um, like the sweet snacks, I put in here. So this is candy, chocolates, those sweet sort of indulgent things. And instead of calling it candy, I wanted to say sweets. I felt like that was a little bit more classy when I was putting these labels together. And by the way, I'm loving these bin labels. These are from Target as well. And this has helped so much, not just me, but also the other people in the house or anyone who is in our house outside of our family. It's also helpful for me to know what's up there in case I forget. Um, so the labels are really helping. And then up on this shelf, I have like our nuts and seeds here. And I decided to put the labels on the side of the lids because I felt like at this height, it was easier to read, especially since they do still kind of cover each other up because the tiers aren't perfect, but I'm fine with how they are. It was nice to not have to pay a single cent in order to make these tiered like this and the labels on the side of the lids is working for me just fine. And then we have a couple of these um, turntables. I actually bought these for my fridge project and only ended up using one that was much bigger on the top shelf. As you saw, we actually put a couple in Weston's supplement cabinet, and I do have one in our spice cabinet. I'm not going to show you the spice cabinet today, uh, but it is actually in one of those get it all done with me videos that's coming out soon. This is more about 
the pantry, but stay tuned for that um, spice cabinet reveal. It sounds so silly to say that, but this one is just for like nut butters. I've got like a little Nutella thing, the Trader Joe's cinnamon bun spread, some syrup, some tahini, and then this one is like our oils. So we have coconut oil, MCT oil, my beloved extra virgin olive oil from Bertoli, our extra um, sesame oil. We have a couple of these things already in the cabinet by where we cook. These are just kind of like our extra stock. And then we have our spices. So uh, yeah, stay tuned to see what the spice cabinet looks like. But these are all of the spices that we chose to hold on to that aren't everyday spices, but ones that we will still use regularly enough to keep. So we have the things to refill our pepper mill. Um, and our salt mill, and this is one of those reused containers. Rather than go and buy something new, I reused a heavy cream container, um, glass one. I actually used that in my uh, coffee video, my fall coffee video, and I repurposed it for that for free. I have cooking spices here and baking spices here, and then these are the things that I will refill the new little containers that I have in my spice cabinet that I decanted our everyday spices into. And so when those run low, I will go straight to this basket to refill them. Just have some clips here close at hand in case we have a bag that needs to be clipped up. And then we have these baskets like I was showing you, small appliances that I took out of the kitchen. Um, hostess wear, paper plates and napkins and other little stuff for that. We have our Christmas plates and mugs in this bin and then my bakeware and some like baking specific supplies like food dye and that sort of thing are up in that basket. Beside that basket I have my extra empty mason jars and then this little wire basket for extra lids so when I acquire new things for my pantry and need to add a jar or whatever I will just go straight to here these are all washed and ready to go and then up on this shelf this is new I'm kind of making this my hostess wear and entertainment shelf so when I have people over and I get a beverage dispenser out or I need a tear for a birthday cake or a fruit tray or something I have that close at hand I used to store all this out in the garage and I still do have some of this stuff out in the garage, but I'm planning a uh, messy to minimal hostess wear declutter video, like closer to the holiday season. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I have some of my favorite like wooden pieces for serving like charcuterie or whatever dips and stuff uh, or cheese board. I have those there. I'm finding myself rarely using my crock pot. I've been actually using my pressure cooker on the slow cooker setting more often than using my crock pot. So I have it up there for now. And if I haven't used it in long enough to justify keeping it, I might just pass it on. Okay, and that brings us over to the laundry side of the room, which since I, this is a pantry declutter, I'm going to actually save this tour for my Instagram. So follow me over there if you guys want a little tour of how I reorganized this laundry room. It looks so much better. It's just a night and day difference from what it was before. This little bin here is for the food bank that's local. I just found some stuff that we're not gonna make our way through, some non-perishables and canned goods, some supplement stuff that I'm gonna bring over there. I actually have more stuff to add to this that I uh, set out in the garage. So we're gonna be making a trip to the food bank, but that is everything for the pantry. I think it actually turned out to be a much longer messy to minimal episode than what's typical here, but it was a big project and I hope you guys enjoyed having some extra motivation for decluttering or some more minimalist, budget-friendly inspiration for how to organize a pantry to not only look beautiful, but also be super functional. The total that I spent for every Everything, whether it was from a garage sale, thrift store, or buying it new on clearance was under $45, which I actually went around and uh, totaled what it would cost for me to purchase the things that I swapped out, like the gray bins for the white ones that I had hidden around my house and it would have been closer to $300 if I had purchased everything new. So I definitely did this on a dime and I am so, so proud of myself. You guys know by now, I am not the sort of person to break the bank in order to make my house Pinterest worthy. So if I can do things on a budget and still have a beautiful and very functional outcome, I am a happy camper. You guys can see how excited I am 
the game for cooking and baking and grocery shopping has totally changed just in this first week of having my pantry like this and I'm really excited for the fall season and for getting into the holiday season with doing more baking and being able to access everything in my pantry and see exactly what my stock is and not worry about the physical clutter as well as the visual clutter when it comes to meal planning and prepping and spending time with my family. Thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and I hope this video helped brighten it up a little bit Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and keep your eye out for Decluttering and minimalism inspiration in my videos coming up to be sure not to miss them Click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss when my next videos go up Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you later